Now I'm very pleased to welcome back Mr. Patrick Gates from the Oddsbreakers to this live stream. You can follow him on Twitter at Gator Betting. Patrick, my man, I got to tell you, it feels like the Masters was yesterday, and here we it are. Does. We have the PGA Championship. How the heck you doing? Good, good. Yeah, I mean, ever since the PGA Championship got moved, I think in 2019, it's kind of it feels like back to back. It's almost like the uh, Triple Crown to keep with the racing theme this week. In terms of, you get one week off and then you're right back at it. It's uh, it's a quick pace for sure. Absolutely. And if you love the ponies, we're doing this tomorrow night. It'll be out for Friday, so uh, it'll be like probably 10 Eastern or something pretty late. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna be talking some Preakness tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. But hey. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have a massive golf event in Major, and it's the PGA Championship. And uh, this is big. It's part of the Grand Slam. Patrick, where is this thing being played? Yeah, so we head back to uh, Valhalla Golf Course, or Golf Club, excuse me, in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, this will be the fourth time that the PGA Championship was held here. The last time we saw this course was back in 14. Some renovations have been made to the course to kind of lengthen it out, which we'll get to later. So now with the fourth time that Valhalla is hosting this uh, PGA turn championship, excuse me, it uh, ties Oak Hill for the fourth most championship. Southern Hill still has the most with five, which we saw back in 2022. The 2008 Ryder Cup was also held here as well. And it, it's a great track. It's uh, one of my favorites for sure. Uh, and I'm excited to see kind of how the renovations play into this week's uh, championship. Do you think it's going to be more challenging than back in 2014? Yeah, so 2014, it's been lengthened uh, about 150 yards, 151 to be exact here. And I think we're going to see kind of uh, in the past, we've seen PGA Championships where Bombers have dominated. And I think this week's going to kind of be a similar theme. Oak Hill only had three inches of kind of rough. And this week we got four. So while it is going to be kind of a Bombers paradise per se, accuracy off the tee is going to be crucial as well. Um, you can't kind of spray it like we saw at LACC with the Open Championship uh, last year. All right. Well, there you go. It's going to be cha challenging, 150 yards longer. See, feels like they uh, keep adding yards to these things. They do. I mean, this like eight yards a hole, you know, it's like, come on, man. I, I mean, I have enough trouble from the tips myself when I'm forced to play them because my <laughs> the friend I happen to be with happens to be a scratch golfer. Yeah, I mean, the property's massive, so they have the room to kind of rearrange holes. And they've, uh, I know Nicholas kind of redid the uh, layout per se a few years ago, I think back in 2006. So they have the room to play with it, but it's going to play pretty similar. Um, so pretty excited for this week. Yeah, with Nicholas doing it, he doesn't want people breaking his records. He's going to make it farther and farther <laughs> possible. That's what I would do. Yeah, you got to prevent <laughs> Michael Block from uh, going out there and posting the course record. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Uh, well, let's go over some of the course information then. You already touched on some. Yeah, so it's a par 71. It's the longest par 71 that players will face this season. It's over 7,600 yards. Uh, and as I mentioned before, it's longer than 2014. The fairways were bent grass, and they've been uh, transitioned to Zoiza, which is kind of an interesting grass uh, as well. Some players kind of take more of a liking to it than others. We saw East Lake have it, TPC Southwind has it as well, and then over at the Zozo Championship uh, in Japan, all featured similar fairway type. It's more tolerant to water. Uh, it's going to dry quicker, which is good for this weekend because it's going to rain today and Friday as well. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's pretty much traditional park lot, park land layout here. Challenging holes. You're going to see a lot of iron shots from over 200 yards, while a few of those par fours do kind of force a layup. Um, it, it is going to kind of traditional, the longer players off the tee. All right. Well, there you go. The longer, the bombers you call them. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go with that. You know, there was a day that tiger was one of those bombers, but obviously we have guys like Bryson and, and Kepka and we got a lot of big hitters these days. So we'll see yeah. how that ends up. Well, going back to this course, um, I mean, w would you consider it? challenging like augusta could be or or is it still a little bit more i i, I suppose lenient on some of the worst players yeah so it's interesting we saw the winning uh score i think it's around uh 11 under and a half here rory back in 2014 finished at 16 under here so while it is going to be a challenging course i i'm curious to see kind of how this plays especially with the additional length um 
it, it looks, the, given the kind of weather conditions here, it looks like the rollout's going to be kind of limited as it's raining Friday, Saturday, and even today. So oh. I, it's it's tough to say in terms of really how this course is going to play, but with any major, uh, I'm kind of expecting it to play a little bit tougher than 2014, given the winning score, which is usually pretty accurate. It's usually within one or two strokes of that based on the odds makers. So I would say it's going to play a little bit tougher for sure. Well, weather was the next question I had. So Friday or Thursday, Friday rain. Which is... uh, so we got rain today, it looks like, and rain Friday, and then scattered thunderstorms on Saturday. So not sure how that's going to impact it here. Obviously, with the cut uh, on Saturday, you're going to go down to 65 and ties. So I'm sure they're going to get it in. But again, it's going to be tough as well. Uh, we've seen some weather delays in the past. Um, it was rainy at last year's PGA Championship. And they kind of persisted through that. So I have a feeling it's going to kind of be a similar conditions. In Valha, Valhalla, isn't that like Viking heaven or something? Like yeah, that? Ex exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the story, like you can go with to Valhalla, like it's there of seeking immortality. The golfers this week, if they win the final hole on Valhalla, um, it's called photo finish number 18, which is the short par five that players are going to be able to reach in two. Compare that to the Kentucky Derby, which just happened in Kentucky, that photo for three horse photo finish. So, I mean, there's pl there's plenty of little uh, innuendos you can go with this week when uh, comparing horse racing and uh, golf. It's a costly finish for myself, my friend. Yeah, I indeed, Sierra only... Leone uh, cost me a bunch of money there. If it was just a little bit different there, maybe they, were, different. maybe they weren't just fighting each other while letting the letting the free the free guy run on the left here. Uh, yeah. I know it, I had Mystic Dan circled too as a mutter, and of course he uh, he he won. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how the weather conditions shape up for the Preakness as well. We both mentioned that too. God. We did. Uh, I know it's it, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know. It, it's, it's the worst when you're kicking yourself because yeah. you said it and you don't do it. It's which is exactly. it's worse than losing a bet. Seriously, <laughs> let's it talk. Is. Let's talk about the favorites in this. Then we got look look at Scotty up there, uh, Scheffler, that plus four fifty. Oh, wow, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, a, that's a kind of pretty... masters odds there. So yeah, yeah Scotty at four fifty has won four of his last five starts here. He's a new father. He took a few weeks off to kind of go back home and be with uh, his wife Meredith for the birth of their first child here. So he's kind of the deserving favorite at plus four fifty. Rory McIlroy won his last two events, the Zara Classic, while he's paired up with Shane Lowry. So it was a team event, and then he came back on Sunday last week at the Wells Fargo to win that. His last major championship did come here at Valhalla. And similar conditions. He won his last two events leading into uh, his PGA Championship victory back in 2014. So another interesting um, storyline there. Xander's up there at 14 to 1. Xander's been close several times this year. Last week at the Wells Fargo, the Players' Championship uh, as well, where he had a one-shot lead heading into Sunday. So while he hasn't been able to get it done and is still looking for his first major victory and first victory of the season, uh, for that reason, he has been in good form. Rom uh, has finished in the top 10 of every live event this season, despite not having won. He struggled with the Masters um, after he won the previous season, but I am backing him this week as a little tease. Uh, I do like him and this course fit as well. And then Brooks, your PGA champion from last year, um, I believe he won live Singapore last week um, and him coming in in good form to any major is always an issue as we know how he elevates his game. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, there's your favorites. Uh, going back to Rory, we want to talk about some real uh, discussion points. He's going through a divorce and yeah. it's just kind of made public. And I think it kind of found out when they were kind of spying on him. And he says, I can't wait to be a single dad. I did see a little, <laughs> I, 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 I did see a little, uh, outtake of that yeah it, yeah i hear that he did well last time he broke up with like a fiance via text or something so now i'm like oh, gosh what was uh, Niaki? yeah yeah the tennis <laughs> star i saw i saw some tweet the other day it's a little little in poor taste but it was like when rory's single he's won his four major championships and when he's been married he hasn't won any so another uh key stat 
it, his uh, his ex wife now used to be a um, employed by the PGA of America, which is the the organizational body that's hosting the PGA Championship. So it's a little funny when uh, that regards as well. Yeah, yeah, that is wow. You can throw a lot of things into this handicap, especially oh, yeah. how Scheffler's getting away from a newborn. I mean, dude, that's got to just make you feel great. Get being like, okay, I can sleep tonight. My wife's yeah. not. You know, maybe you could hire some help or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be a good husband to do. But at the same time, you know, getting away from that newborn for a little while, it ain't the worst thing in the world. So maybe no. he does good. So, he has enough money just from the past uh, four starts alone that I think he uh, he can hire some help. Let alone his other victories on tour. So I don't think money's an issue for Scotty. I don't think so either. Well, good for him, and that's why he's a ma- he's a huge favorite. And I'm seeing like forty to one stuff for him to compete complete the Grand Slam. Uh, you know, it hasn't been done since what it was. Uh, not even Nicholas did it. I think it was way back. Oh God, any single to, season. Yeah, Sam, Sam Sneed was it Sneed that did it once. Uh, I'd Arnold Palmer, it, Palmer, Sneed, those are the num- names I'm thinking of, but we're talking about guys that probably aren't really around anymore, especially when it comes to Sam Sneed. So, um, yeah, it, it's almost impossible. And it's sitting there at 41. I'm like, you serious? I'm like, I would rather do a money line rollover or just bet the plus 450, but throw 10 bucks on it or something. Then you bet 55 the next time if you win the plus 450. I mean, that would be better than 41, in my opinion. Um, for sure. Like missed, yeah. It was like a triple crown winner at 10 to one. You're like, I would even touch that if I, if I wanted to, if I had to bet it, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Mystic Dan. Seriously. Yeah. That, that yeah. was important. All right. So, Hey, well, let's go to the sleepers. All right. And obviously sleeper that I love using the term, but a lot of golf people don't. So I'll just say, how about some of the long shots here? Uh, what are you thinking about some of the long shots? Yeah, I mean, again, with the Masters, we, we kind of went over this too, but 35 or one's kind of been the cutoff here uh, for four of the past five champions. Phil is obviously that outlier at 250 to one, what he won in Kiowa back in 2021. There's a few names that I like here, um, kind of above that 50 to one range. And that's kind of, it depends on the event. Obviously, some long shots, you can kind of say 75 to one in events like the ultimate event last week, the Myrtle Beach Classic or kind of your hundred to one shots and other uh, smaller field events, kind of where that term comes in. But I'm looking at Tyrrell Hatton here uh, at 60 to one here. I grabbed him. Uh, not the longest driver in the field, but he is over that 300 yard mark on the season. He's better on bent grass as well, ranking third in the field in strokes gain putting over the last 24 rounds. And I think that's going to be crucial this week here. Three putt avoidance, kind of strokes gain putting. While obviously not kind of that key marquee stat per se with your strokes gained off the tee is going to play a factor in this one. Um, he played well at the Masters last month as well, and he's played well on live um, this season. So I like him. And then in his recent PGA Championship outings, Oak Hill and Southern Hills, he finished T15 and T23 here. So I don't mind him. Obviously not kind of that calm demeanor you associate with a uh, major championship, but his skill set does line up for this course here. So I don't mind him at 60 to one here. Another guy I have, it's a placement here. Tommy Fleetwood um, has finished inside the top 15 in three of his last four events here. He finished T3 at the Masters, which since the move to the PGA Championship as the second major championship in 2019, we've seen kind of a strong correlation between how players have done in that first major championship to how they perform at the PGA Brooks last year was in his second at the masters and won the PGA championship. Um, he finished 13th at the Wells Fargo last week. He's a strong short game player and he's 17th in the field in strokes gained approach. So I don't mind Fleetwood. And then again, 18th at Oak Hill last year and T five at Southern Hills in 2022. So those are a few of the guys that I like uh, in the longer shot range. A few other guys, Norin, Alex Norin. Um, I have him for top 40 here. And then Benny on as well, which I have for top 20. Um, that are going to be some names you see as some of the longer shots this week. Top 20, Benny on. Yep. What's he? What's his number at? Plus 220. Okay. I got to find him here. Benny on fire is what we're looking for here, right? Yeah. So, uh, Beyond that, pun on. Yep. Um, all right. There. Yep. All right. So looking at some of these other names, like I'm seeing some guys fall. 
And um, there's Byung Han on at 55 to 1. And so plus 450 here to be in the top 20. Or no, that's top 10. Sorry, that's top 10. If you think he can do that, good. But we're talking top 20. I'm seeing guys like Spieth way up there, you know. Uh, 65 to 1. I'm seeing Jason Day, who had his day back in the day, 65 to 1. And then guys like Matt Fitzpatrick, who was so hot last summer at 70 to 1. What's their excuses here, man? Yeah, I mean, the underrated storyline this week is if Spieth wins this week at the PGA Championship, he completes his career Grand Slam. He's one major championship away from uh, kind of beating Rory to it, which is um, pretty funny as well. Spieth struggled this year, especially with his iron play. Um, has it been nearly as consistent as we saw last year? He missed the cut at the TJ Cup by Ren Nelson, finished T29 last week, and lost strokes on approach in both of those events. His driving distance has increased this year, which I guess is one positive. You're kind of looking for a correlation to Valhalla here. Struggled at the Masters, missed the cut as well. And then going off with Fitzy too. I, Fitzpatrick is one of my favorite golfers here, and he's so streaky. He, he's one of the streakiest golfers on tour here. Um, and again, his iron play hasn't nearly been the same from when we saw him win at the Country Club, uh, I want to say two years ago, where he kind of edged out Zalatoris. Um, his putting has been better this year. Uh, he was red hot leading into the Masters, fought fifth at the Players, 10th at the Valero, and had a decent performance at Augusta with the T22. Since then, T28 at the RBC, T11 in the team event at uh, the Zurich Classic of New Orleans, and then T52 last week. I, I don't know if this course sets up well for him uh, at all, just based off his current form. Maybe I would take him as a placement, but I, I just don't think he's going to be kind of one of those guys to see on the first page of the leaderboard come Sunday. All right. Well, there you go. And one more, Shane Lowry. Holy cow, he was pretty poor in the Masters, if I remember. I think he was one of the guys I was on. He's at 100 to 1 here, you know. Yeah, Lowry was a popular pick, too, at Augusta. I was on him as well uh, leading into that event. He had a T4 third place and T19. So he looked to be in great form, but his putting has just fallen off a cliff. His last three uh, events, lost strokes to the Masters, the RBC. And then if you, the Zurich was especially interesting as well, where he was paired up with Rory, who won. And they just tried to limit the amount of putts that Shane took as well in terms of the alternating shot format. He was not good whatsoever, really. Uh, Rory carried him. And in that playoff, they just got lucky with two kind of missed shots. Um so, yeah, and then last week as well, his distance has kind of been fading as well. Uh, his approach play hasn't been kind of nearly as strong as we saw it uh, in the past few events. And putting again this week is going to be so tough. If he can't limit those three putts while he may be able to get there in two, it's going to be a long week for uh, Shane. All right, all right. Well, are you betting any matchups in this? Are you going to fade Lowry or somebody else? Yeah, so I, I haven't added a matchup to my card, but I, I probably will tonight. I have one that I like. It's Jordan Smith over Thriston Lawrence here. So both are kind of European guys. They play on the PG, or the DP World Tour. Uh, Thriston Lawrence came over and started playing on the PGA Tour in his last three events, but he's missed the cut in both of those. Last week at Myrtle Beach was an alt event, so you're going to have a much weaker field. Um, he, he did okay. But Jordan Smith, uh, this, this I believe this will be his first PGA Tour appearance this season. He's played well um, in his last two major championships, T41 at the Open and then T20 at the U.S. Open. It, in terms of just the last 24 stats, so he's 27th in approach, 19th in strokes gained off the tee, and 29th in strokes gained tee degree. And then the long iron play is what really separates him. He's 12th in the field from proximity gained 200 yards. You look at Thriston Lawrence, he's 135th in the field from proximity gained 200 plus yards, 124th in approach, and 89th in off strokes gained off the tee here. So at minus 125, I don't hate it. That's on Superbook. Uh, they usually have a few more matchups than other, um, like your DraftKings, which kind of features mainly the top of the board. I haven't checked out BetMGM or FanDuel to see if they offer that, but I don't mind that matchup as well. All right, we'll be looking at that for sure. And what are you? Is there anybody to fade that you or not fade necessarily? If you fade them, it's mostly matchups. But like anybody that you really want to stay away from. And I got one to throw at you. 
All right, let's uh, let's hear yours to start here because I it, I struggle with this too in terms of kind of fading where I, I kind of have my short list of let's say ten to twenty guys and kind of go from there and everyone else is kind of already out so I really don't even look at those players per se. DJ Dustin Johnson, that man has no I care. Had, I had all, I had all <laughs> with all the money this man has made. I mean, he's not. He's, it feels like he doesn't really care i don't know he's like i yeah. just ripped off live golf and uh you know i'm making a bunch of money but like some oil money and i don't have to play no more yeah i don't know it, it just feels like you should fade him in every, like a lot of competitions i get i see speed here minus 125 on DraftKings against johnson um very tempting there i've heard that rory was matched up against johnson but i think that's already climbed up to minus 200 but i think it was at minus 140 for a while yeah but, it's a great but, price but I think he could be one that misses the cut. Um, what? Do, so you had him written down. What did you have I, written down? I, I had a Cam Smith over Dustin Johnson matchup that I really liked uh, as well. So Smith, in his last three events, he finished T6 at the Masters, T14 at Live Adelaide, which was back in his home country of Australia. And then last week, he finished T2 at Live Singapore. In the last two PGA Championships, finished T9 at Oak Hill and T13 at Southern Hills. You look at DJ on the opposite, opposite hand, missed the cut at the Masters, T31 at Live Adelaide, and T7 at Live Singapore. So while he was kind of rounding into form there, Smith's been in better form. And then his last two PGA Championships, missed the cut at Southern Hills and finished T55 in 2023. The only issue that people are kind of giving DJ a shot this week is because of his distance off the tee. He's been fairly decent with his irons here, but I think Smith's overall short game and putting can kind of propel him at least to the weekend here. And then if you're looking at kind of further on there, I don't, I have Cam Smith in the top 20 this week, so I don't mind that either. I think that's around plus 160. So that's another matchup that I don't mind. He's minus 135 over DJ. Well, there you go. And you have some of these plays over on your wonderful article at the Oddsbreakers, correct? Correct. Yep. Every uh, My full card's posted there, posted that last night. So if you're looking for kind of a breakdown on each of the placements, outrights, be sure to check that out. Absolutely. Check it out at the oddsbreakers.com. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for breaking down the PGA Championship. Make sure you get all Patrick's information at the Oddsbreakers. Patrick, best of luck this weekend. We'll be texted. Thanks, Kiev.